when balls touch, they only make contact at one point. Balls touching only touch at one point. Just stop typing, it will get removed. What does this have to do with billiards? Well, when you're playing pool, it's a very precise game. And so you aim at very precise spots and thus the transference of energy can be extremely well controlled. If you'll pretend that this is a pull cue for a moment, this pull cue is flat at the end, which is to say that it's a plane. And when a plane comes in contact with a sphere, it also touches in one point. But there's a problem with this. Let's suppose that for a shot, we want to aim off to the side and hit the ball here to give it a little bit of sideways spin. And so we're aiming for this spot here. Imagine this is the plane up close. The problem is that though we want to hit in the center of the bullseye, the pull cue actually strikes the ball over here to the side. And the ball is just going to interpret it as a hit to this spot. And so if you round this surface down to make it a portion of a sphere, then it will better approximate a ball-ball collision that's just easier to predict. It's all about reducing error while you're playing the game. If you look around asking the question, what should I do with the tip of my pool cue? The consensus seems to be on the internet that the diameter of it should be somewhere between that of a dime and a nickel. And right in between that size window is a three quarter inch inside diameter piece of copper pipe. The dime is just a little bit smaller and the nickel is just a little bit bigger. And so if we line the inside of this with sandpaper, say, it will reduce the diameter just a little bit and it will be nearly dime sized, which is good for me because, because I have a pool table that's scaled down in size. Since these are so small, when I aim at the cue ball, I'm aiming at a much smaller target to get the same level of precision. And so shaping the pool cube becomes rather important. Compare these two. This one is well shaped. It's nice and spherical. This one is pretty flat. So here's how I shape them. These are just pieces of copper pipe about an inch and a half long and they've been cut in half with a hacksaw and spray adhesive stuck some sandpaper to them. This one is for shaping. This one is for smoothing. This one is 100 grit, this one is 220, I think. And so to use them is easy enough. We'll use the shaper one first, and then the one that sands it smooth second. So this is the 100 grit one. I typically hold my hand so that this finger keeps the cue from coming off this side, and the thumb keeps it from coming off this side, and then we just roll. As you do this, you'll notice, I'll show you up close in a moment, but while you're far away, I also do this a little bit. Now as you're doing it, what you'll see is a ring form around the outside. So imagine, as you're twisting it, it will cause a ring to form around the outside. As you continue to do it, the ring will grow and grow and grow, and the little tiny circle that remains in the center will shrink. Eventually, when that cir circle just becomes a dot that's in the center, you're really close, and then when it's completely done, it will go away entirely. Looking up close, the one on the right is not what we want. It's in progress. You can see that outer ring starting to close in on the center. The one on the left, that is what we want when we're all finished. And so starting with step one, I rest the cue on this finger, cap it off with my thumb so it can't go anywhere, and now I just spent about ten minutes doing this. Ten minutes is an exaggeration, more like five. But look, see how you can still see a little bit of sunlight through there? As long as there's light, you aren't finished. 
When the circle has finally gone from the center, then you would use this. This is just to smooth it. The last step is to polish it. And to do that, you put on an old pair of blue jeans and you just do this. And I shouldn't have to tell you, this is the most dangerous part of the process. <laughs> Be careful. But uh, the cotton blue jeans will give it a nice polish look. And that's looking pretty good. And to be sure that you have it right, some chalk. As long as the chalk hits everywhere, you know you're in business. In comparison, if you chalk it up and it looks like this, you're doing it wrong. Hope this was useful to you. See you on the next subject. Thank you.